Hi guys. <laughs> Got a new microphone set up here. And in fact, I did have it on the last one, but you couldn't see it. Um, do you like my fancy patented microphone fixing? Yeah, there. Email me for ordering details. It's only 150 quid. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yet another Raw Therapy 5.8 video. And uh, what are we going to do today? Yes, well, what I thought I'd do is I would create a video all about saving your images in raw therapy. Um, this has sort of come to light off. Uh, um, somebody who will remain nameless won't be Judith, except Judith isn't their real name, but they know who they are. Yeah, um massive massive lengthy phone calls um getting someone set up in raw therapy and he, not the only one who's asked me this and it can get a little bit confusing for people who are used to lightroom and if i just jump over to lightroom if we process a raw file in lightroom and then we send it over to Photoshop. We do something to it in Photoshop. And then we save it in Photoshop. It becomes viewable next to the original RAW file. And so there's this crosstalk. Now, the reason you've got this crosstalk is A, because of Adobe Camera Raw. Um, but secondly, and most importantly, um, the creation of the if you like, the archival image and the full-size uh, image that you've worked up in Photoshop, which is derived from the RAW file, which is obviously going to be a TIFF file. Um, Photoshop saves it automatically to the same place where the source file is. And, you know, I mean, to me, it makes a lot of logical sense to save your archival image right next to the RAW file in the same folder. Um, but there's an awful lot of Lightroom users out there who <laughs> do this automatically without realising what they're doing. So, of course, when it comes to um, something like Raw Therapy, Raw Therapy has a much more simple um, approach to seeing where your images are and to saving them. Um, there's no sort of interaction with any other piece of software and so i've got four images open here so we've got a red squirrel and we've got a white tail sea eagle and we've got a barn owl and we've got a puff puff yes now if i go over to the file browser you can see where they are they're each one in its own folder and each one of those folders is a subfolder in this folder called saves which is in itself a subfolder in of this folder called rt dump all righty now if i pull up this saves folder you can see i've got my four subfolders each one of them has got the original raw file in and as you work in the processing profile that you're creating for the image is stored on the fly and I'll show you how to make sure that's done in a moment but raw therapy cannot see subfolders as I said before it's very very simplistic um, which is never a bad thing in photography but it is very simplistic in the way it looks at things it just says show me a folder so you show it to folder, and if it's got anything in it that raw therapy can read, raw therapy will allow you to process it. So I like it being simple because it just saves such a lot of confusion. However, it does lead to a little bit of a problem because I've processed this um, red squirrel image. As you can see, that's what it looks like without any processing. Da -da. And that's what it looks like. Processed. There we go. Now then, in all the videos I've 
done on raw therapy so far. I when I move something into Photoshop, which we will go and do now, I always click on this shortcut, which you can also use the Control E shortcut on your keyboard. This is just a quick way of getting the image into an editor. So we'll get the image over into Photoshop, which is my chosen editor. Now there is Photoshop opening up. Ta-da! There it is. Now then. <laughs> what we've got here is a TIFF file. Because remember, when you do this from Lightroom to Photoshop, it still says it's either a .nef or a CR2 or whatever. It isn't, not really. But the fact is, we've actually got a 16-bit Pro Photo RGB TIFF open in Photoshop. Now, where the devil is that image, actually? Well, the simple thing you can do, and this is where there's a danger with using that little Control E artist's palette with a paintbrush. And that is danger with using that button. Because if I go to File, you see, I can't go Save because I haven't done anything to it. But if I go Save As, it will immediately open the directory where that, or this TIFF file, actually lives at the moment. And this is the shocker. It lives in this folder called T. And this folder called T is a temporary folder. And a lot of people have asked me this. Raw Therapy uses a temporary folder on your computer to store rapidly exported images over into your chosen raster image processor. Now, here's the thing about a temporary folder. When you turn your computer off, that folder gets emptied. Yeah. So, if we were to command or control click on the composite RGB, come back to layers, Command J to jump that selection to a new layer. Put it in the screen blending mode. Then put a black mask over it. And I'm going to pick up my pen tool. And with a white brush, I can now just come in and just do a little bit of dodge work on that squirrel. Just like that. So now you can see... I've made a change to the image. Now the thing is, if I go save, which is what I know a lot of people have tried to do, what that's done is that's actually saved the image to that temporary folder, which frankly is about as useful a thing to do as trying to make a cup of tea in a chocolate teapot. Because the minute you turn your computer off, you're going to have lost the image. So, if you use that method of getting from raw therapy to Photoshop, what you really need to do is to go file and go file save as. And what you could do with doing is remembering where the source file is. Now, I know where the source file is. It's in saves and it's in red squidgy. Okay, so I could go in there and I could go save but I'm not going to because I want to show you another way now if I go back to raw therapy the second way we can save a file is to come down to this little old floppy drive icon here and this will save the image now then you have a list of destinations here inside of the save dialog box for raw therapy and in there is the actual source file containing folder so we could elect to save it in red squidgy yes as a 16-bit uncompressed tiff 
we can actually save the processing parameters with the image, that's a PP3 file, and we could click OK, and that image would go into that folder. We could then navigate back to that folder and then open that file up inside of Photoshop, and Photoshop would know, obviously, where the file is, so when you click Save, when you've finished your work, it'll go back into the right place. And we're using the same sort of location setup for the image and the source file as you would use ordinarily in the Lightroom. However, there is yet another way. What we can do is we can come to this middle icon, this gear icon here, and we can save it to this thing, the processing queue. So we can transfer this image to the processing queue because we don't want to do anything else to it in raw therapy. We can now come to this image and put that in the processing queue. We can now come back to this image and we can put that in the processing queue. And we can come to this little puff puff image and we can put him in the processing queue as well. So if we now go to the queue, you can see we've got four images in there. Now then, output location. Use template, or you can save them all to a dedicated folder of your choosing, should you wish to do so. However, this use template, it's not really very self-explanatory until you actually pull up the pop-up for it. Come on, it was there a minute ago. There we go. So you can specify where it's going to go. I wish this damn pop-up would come up. Let me, there it is. Right, so specify the output location based on the source photo's loca location, rank, trash status, or position in the queue. Hmm. All sounds a bit complicated. And then we've got this list here of different codes that we can put in for this template. Now, it all looks very, very confusing. But if we hop over to Rawpedia, we can get a view of it that is somewhat larger. Now, all these different codes might be useful to certain people. But if you want to maintain the common sense workflow for your archival images, these are the store them right next to the raw file in the same containing folder. Here it is. If you want to save the output image alongside the source image, write this code. Now, obviously, that should mean type this code or enter this code. So, if we select and go copy and then come back to raw therapy and then we go into the template dialog and we just go command v and there it is so all these images when i activate this processing cube are all going to become 16-bit uncompressed tips they're going to have the up-to-date PP3 save with them, and they're all going to go back to their original source folders. Because remember, each one of these images comes from a different folder on my machine. So all we'll do now is go and... and I do make one suggestion here. Uncheck Auto Start. All righty. So process them all together. So we'll just... Hit the Q button, just to fire it up. And uh, yeah, the Q is now being processed. So let's wait a moment. I will actually cut out the waiting time of the video. So you can see the Q's going down. We've processed two images already. Now we're down to the last one. And there we go, they're all done. So if I now come down to my finder, here's my saves folder with my four subfolders open. 
you can see I've got my original raw file sitting there in each one. I've then got a raw file PP3, I've then got an output PP3 and my new TIFF image. And those images are all sitting right next to their original source images. Fabulous. That is the way most people in Lightroom have been working ever since they started using Lightroom. It's just that most of you who use Lightroom don't actually realise that's what's happening. So, we are sorted now. We can go back to our file browser and we could then go and bring in some more images if you wanted to. We could actually go and make some adjustments to these images because the processing PP3 files are saved right next to them. So we could fundamentally just go in, open them back up, do a little bit more processing, send them over to the queue, activate the queue, and all that will do is overwrite the old TIFF images with the new ones. Alrighty, so there you go. Raw therapy. And of course, to do that bit of dodging and burning inside of Photoshop, I need to shut this image down. And then I shall come back to my saves folder. And it was the red squidgy image, wasn't it? So I am going to click on there. Right click. Open with Photoshop 2020. And then I can just go over here. Channels. Command or Control click. Back over to Layers. Command J to jump that to a new selection. Put that in the screen blending mode. Out click on the mask to add a black mask. Hit B to pull up my brush tool. And I can now carry on doing exactly what I was doing before. I think I might make my brush a little bit more revealing. Rather like that. And that'll do. Just want to make some little adjustments there. Okay, and we might just feather that mask out. Yep, rather like that. And of course, that's now a multi-layered image. And I can just go File. And I can now go Save. Saved at 1034. Come back to Saves. And there we go, there's our reprocessed or altered, improved, enhanced in Photoshop TIFF. Modified today at 10.34. So this is a really nice, simple way of keeping everything together so you know exactly where it is. And just getting a backwards and forwards thing going inside or between raw therapy and Photoshop. Alrighty guys, hope that's proved useful to you. If it has, give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. If you're not already subscribed, Click the subscribe button, do the ringety tingety bell thingy, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for your uh, subscriptions. Very, very nice. And uh, yeah, please feel free to share this video with your friends if you think they'll find it useful as well. So until the next time, guys and gals, keep safe, keep taking the pictures, and uh, I'll see you. Cheerio.